Okay, our ready topic for today for the 4.5 ready, and by the way, this is on page 24 of your packets. It is just giving us the topic of square roots, a real quick overview of square roots. So let's take a, a peek at this and see if these make sense for you. So they're telling me that the area of this first square is 16, and they want to know the side length. Since it's a square, we know it's the same side times the same side, or side squared. So side squared equal to 16. How would I solve backwards to find a side length? Some of you are probably thinking four, but what did you do in your head? You took the square root of that number. And so like you said, the square root of 16 squared, we're just getting four inches. Okay, go do the same thing to the next one, apply it. What's the square root of x minus 11 squared? Well, the square root of anything squared is just that anything. It means that essentially square rooting something cancels out the squared and just leaves you that anything. So what's the square root of x minus 11 squared? You got it, x minus 11 feet. Last but not least, this next one is not in a nice, perfect square factors form. I'm going to need to factor it. So what times what equals this beautiful trinomial? Well, we're reminded of this thing called a perfect square trinomial, and we think, okay, well, 25 is a perfect square. What times what equals 25a squared? How about 5a and 5a? And what times what equals 36, another perfect square? 6. What sign do you think is going to go in the middle? You got it, it's a plus. And so where does that middle term come from? 5 times 6 is 30. 30 A's and 30 A's gives us our double middle term of 60 A's. Bing, bing, bing. There it is right there. So the perfect square factors of that beautiful trinomial are right here. Now that I have those, I can square root it. And so my side length is 5 A plus 6 centimeters. And you can put parentheses around these or not. It's up to you. Okay, that side done. Let's go fill in a couple tables here of square roots. So it's telling me to complete these tables by taking the square root of the inputs. To get the output, f of x, they want us to square root the input. Okay, well I'm pretty good at this. What's the square root of 1? You got it, 1. What's the square root of 4? Oh, what's the square root of 9? I see the pattern and so on and so forth. Okay, well that was pretty easy. Let's go check out the next one. Okay, what's the square root of 25? Yeah, five still, uh-oh. Square root of 50, I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna go down here. What's the square root of 100? Okay, I know that one. And what's the square root of 225? Okay, I know that one. These other guys, uh-oh, I have to do something. So what's that something that Ms. Sanchez has taught us how to do? I'm going to start with root 50 and root 75. Remember when it's not a perfect square, how we break it up into what times what equals 50? So we might say to ourselves 25 times 2. Well, the reason I like that is 25 is a perfect square. And 5 times 5, when I circle that pair of factors, I can pull a 5 out and a 2 is left underneath. Okay, same thing for 75. Couldn't I say that 75 is 25 times 3? Like think of 3 quarters. And so break that up again. What's going to come out and what's going to stay in? You got it. So I'm starting to see a pattern here. Hang on a second. 5 root 2 and 5 root 3. Well, guess what 10 is equal to? 5 root 4. So my seating pattern here, is it going to work out to 5 root 5? Let's go see if that's the pattern. Root 125, isn't that 25 times 5? So a 5 comes out, a 5 stays in. Oh, hey, I see my pattern now. So this one's 5 root 5, so this one's 5 root 6. Don't believe me, go break it down. And this one's 5 root 7, don't believe me, go break it down. And this one's 5 root 8, oh shoot. 8 can break down further. This is also equivalent to 10 root 2. 
Feel free to break it down if you don't believe me. 15 could be rewritten as 5 root 9 because square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. And then this is 5 root 10. That's kind of a cool one. Hopefully you remember how to do these simple find of radicals at the bottom. Okay, first one easy, second one, ooh, not as easy. But let's go peek at the third one, see if we can see the pattern. Now before I can go do square root of this, it would be super nice if I had factors. And then I recognize, wait a second, look at this. Isn't that a perfect square trinomial? What do I mean by that? I mean x times x equals x squared. 1 times 1 equals 1. And what sign goes in the middle? Yeah, that's my x minus 1 squared factors for my trinomial. How about the next one? What times what equals x squared? What times what equals 4? What sign goes in the middle? That's my x minus 2 squared factors. Are you starting to recognize the pattern? x minus 3 squared. <gasps> x minus 4 squared. x minus 5 squared, etc., etc. So what's the square root of x minus 1 squared? What's the square root of x minus 2 squared? And so on and so forth, all the way down. If you're watching this and you're not good at finding the factors for that trinomial, please come see me in tutoring. That's it. There's already how'd you do.